Hi folk, welcome back. We're busy looking at graphs and it's getting quite intense. Okay, uh, This whole section of graph, we, we, we're spending a lot of time on it. But that's because graph work comes up in so many sections. And I'm yet to find a, a mathematical literacy paper where there is no graphs. Okay, Every paper, whether it's a paper one or paper two, you're going to find graphs. And so in this little session, we're going to continue looking at graphs. But what we're going to be doing in this section is we are going to be looking at direct and indirect proportion. So what is direct proportion? And what is indirect proportion? Indirect proportion is when one quantity is multiplied, the other quantity is multiplied by the same number. The result is a straight line passing through the origin, zero, zero. Example, if one chocolate costs 10 rand, then two chocolates would cost 20 rand, and three chocolates would cost 30 rand. In an indirect or inverse proportional, as one quantity decreases, the other increases. Okay, so let's put that in English. In a direct proportion graph, as one quantity goes higher, the other quantities are so going higher. In an indirect uh, proportion or inverse graph, as one goes lower, the other one goes higher. Okay, so we're getting this kind of graph. All right, so one goes lower, one goes higher, or as one goes higher, the other one goes lower. Okay, so let's have a look at an example with that. All right, a rectangle has fixed area of 32 squares, okay, or 32 square units. But the length and the breadth can both change. If the length gets smaller, the breadth gets bigger because the area stays the same. So folk, let's have a look at this. What is area of a rectangle? Okay, Area of a rectangle is equal to length times breadth. So if the length is one meter, and we told the area is 32, the breadth has to be 32. Why? Because one times 32 gives me 32. If we change that, and we say the area is still 32, but now we're going to make the length 2, what is the breadth? Well, 2 times what gives me 32? 16. If we say it's 32, and we make the length 4, 4 times what gives me 32? 4 times 8. Look what's happening here, folk. As my length, is increasing. I got one, two, then I got four. What's happening to my breadth? 32, 16, 8. It's decreasing. So my length is going up, but my breadth is going down. That's an inverse proportional. Okay, so let's have a look at a few questions. Now, complete the table of possible values for the length and the breadth of the rectangle. Remember again, and I'm going to write this here, area is equal to length times my breadth. Now, we want our area to be 32 units squared. Okay. So if the length is 1, the breadth has to be 2. Why? Because 1 times 32 is 32. Now, if the length is 2, what must the breadth be? Well, 2 times what will give me 32? 2 times 16. Now let's have a look at the 4. If the length is 4, 4 times what gives me 32? 4 times 8 gives me 32. If the length is 8, 8 times what gives me 32? 8 times 4. 16 times 2. 32 times 1. Can you see what's actually happening here? As my length is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, my breadth is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay? In direct proportion. Right. So, my next question is going to be this. I bet they're going to ask us to draw a graph here somewhere. Okay. Draw a graph, here it is, to show all the possible values of the length and the breadth. Now, folks, when we look at this, I'm going to count across and up. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six blocks. And I've got to get to a total of 32. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to just make some extra room and I'm going to say each block represents six units. So I've got six units, 12, 18, 24, and then I'm going to have 30 and then 36. I'm going to do the same on my horizontal scale. I'm going to go 6, 12, 18, 24, let's keep going up, 30, and 36. Okay, now, we said, and I'm going to make one the length and one the breadth, eh? What should we do? Should we make this the length? Let's do that. We'll say this is my length, and this over here is my breadth. Okay, so we said when my length is 1, my breadth was 32. So between these two points is 6, so 1 we'll make somewhere over there, 30 here, 2 over there, so our point is going to be over here. Then when my length is 2, which we'll make over here, the other one has got to be 16, which is halfway in there. Okay. Right. Then we said when my length is 4, which is possibly over there, 4 times, what gave me 32? 4 times 8. And um, 6, uh, 8, 10, so 8 somewhere over here. We'll make it over there. Okay. When this was 8, so over there, 8, and then my breadth was going to be 8 times, what gave me 32? 8 times 4, so it would be somewhere over here. When my length was then, um, what did we say it was going to be? Um, let's just go back to our table quickly. So, 4, 8, eight 16, and then 32. Okay, so when my length was 16, right which is somewhere over here i've got a breadth of two which is there then when my was 32 over here i had a unit of one now when i draw this graph and i'm going to draw it in a different color and it's quite hard to draw this but i'm going to try anyway we're going to draw my graph like this and we're going to complete it oops gone a little bit wrong here there we go okay what do you notice my graph is not proportion no at all okay so as the length came down the breadth went up as the breadth went down the length came up and that's what we call indirect proportional all right now is this graph continuous or is it discrete? Explain. Okay. In other words, do we have a solid line? Should we have a solid line or should we have a dotted line? And guys, uh, we're going to have to have little dotted lines here, right? As the one is four, the other one's got to be, um, what's it, eight? Four eights are 32. All right. Um, we can't have little bits and pieces because it's not quite all going to work together okay then remember the important things to note about a graph of an inverse proportion r it's a smooth curve okay so as the one increases so the other one decreases the curve never touches the axis why can the curve never touch the axis it can never touch because if it touches, it means one of the units is zero. And zero times what gives me 32? Nothing. Zero times anything will always give you zero. So I can never have a zero. My length could never be zero. My breadth could never be zero. So if we go back and look at these graphs, okay, then we've got to say, well, actually, this graph is never going to touch this axis. 
It'll get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer, but it will never touch. When we look here as well on our vertical axis, it's going to get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer, but it'll never touch. It can't touch. Because if it touches, you saying that zero times something can give you 32, and it can't give you 32, right? So these graphs will never touch the axes. Then, at any point, the product of the two quantities is always the same. Okay? And that's why when I've got my graph, I've drawn, initially I said it was going to be a dotted line. Hey, it's not. It's going to be a solid line. Why? Because any number here times any number there must give me my 32. Any number here times that number must give me the same answer. Any number there times that number must give me the same answer. So at any point, the product of the two quantities is always the same. That number times that number over here is the same as that number over here times this number over there. Okay? They always must be the same. So then, folk, in summary, in this segment, we've covered the following. We've looked at direct and indirect proportion. Remember direct proportion, as the one goes up, the other goes up. Indirect proportion, as the one comes down, the other goes up. All right, and look out for those graphs. You could see them at the end of the year. Chat soon.